So I've got a new little toy here that I figured I'd make a video of fixing. It's a Honda 250EX little race bike. I don't exactly know what's wrong with it yet. But it's got that cool little rack on the back. But uh, apparently it's got a new carb, so... And I did spray some fuel in it when I went and looked at it and didn't fire off. Plug, cool pack. Just unplug that and then... Uh... Alright. It's a good looking air filter. Let's see if it'll take off on some uh, starting fluid real quick, just to see what'll happen. See, this bike actually has a uh, swing or whatever it is, the extension kit to put the wheels out wider. I don't, I forgot what this is called. It's got the, it's got a lowering kit to raise the shock mounts up to lower the front end, which I want to put it back. I don't want it this high. I want to drop it, make it the front end come up a little bit because it, it's too low for me. Real, real quick before I start messing with uh, taking things apart and looking at timing, I just want to see something real quick. Yeah. Not see the valve, but see what they're doing easily. Unplug right here that somebody is almost stripped out. Which back in here that I have going to the back casing right there. I'm just turning it, looking for some marks here. Ah, it passed it. Dang it. Anyway, it just passed the T, which is top. <clears throat> this bike does have a HMF pipe on it, so... Carburetors out. It's not exactly how I wanted to go about it, but the airbox is in the way. So. Yeah, it will be. Oh, then you're gonna freeze, like, just letting you know. All right, valves are out. This is intake. 
exhaust. You can see a little bit of crud. I already put them on the wire wheel. That what you're seeing right there just won't come off. It's on there. But it's not, it doesn't seem to be bent to me, but I am going to stick a wire wheel in here and kind of clean up this head a little bit. That, and I might just do a top end on it, but I want to figure out what the issue was first, because that top end was, something was out of time, because it, it should have had compression, unless those rings were just in a row and air was going by them. Which, if it's in time perfectly, then that must have been the case. That's all. That's the only thing. Other thing I can see where I'm at. I pulled the front cover off right here. It's just a bunch of small little bolts all the way around. And I think I found the culprit here. That is the timing chain, and it's got a couple locked up links as well as I found this, which is the timing chain guide laying down in there. So, timing chain guide broke. But uh, what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to pull the motor out since I got to get down in here and stuff and these are a pain to torque and all that. Start. They're a uh, 14 millimeter. I've got a 916 so it'll be alright. on the table. Alright, let's kind of inspect here and see what happened. So as you can see, the timing chain right there. The links are locked up right there. The guides, that's the tensioner. Oh, that's where it broke up in there. Right there. That's where it broke. This bearing is on here way too tight. I went and got a whole nother engine because I was doing a little bit of research and I found that the cam timing chain guide and the timing chain and all that good stuff, after buying all that, it was gonna be like $300 and a couple other things I needed, these two. But, uh, so then I just, I got this engine for free and it, it's got a 
throw a rod to the side. So I'm just gonna raw parts off of this thing. I can't use anything up here though, really. I mean, it's different valve cover, different head. I think the jug might be the same though. Let's tear this bad boy down, I guess. Crankshaft likes to turn a little bit that way because of the magnets and the stator part. But anyway, you line the 250 up here with this little point right there in the case with that little dot. And I'm pretty sure that's like a 350 mark or something. I don't know. But anyway, tensioner goes in there and then it, yeah. So let's go ahead and start putting this bad boy back together. this on camera but I'm just pulling this guy out of the case off because I saw RTV and that tells me that they've been into it and if the same person to the other side did this side then they weren't the brightest so I just took it off to kind of take a look in here and one thing I found if be smart with the RTV because what happens is it this is an oil gallon I'm pretty sure that's what this goes to because it come off right right there so and this was full I just picked it out but it was full of RTV and it wasn't any, letting any oil through so that's why you just have to be mindful of it and this was kind of stopped up I mean it, it oil could still flow through it but it was pretty stopped up and they put way too much way 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 too much so I'm going to scrape all this RTV off and put on a paper gasket and just clean it up. Get the gunk out the bottom. And order a wrist pin since the, this one is kind of worn out. I don't know why they don't see you a wrist pin in this kit right here. I mean, I thought Honda would, but apparently not. So let's uh, take care of that.
last thing I need is a fire ignition. The original Honda clamp right here. It's thin, metal, it rusts, it's all bent up. These, however, are have a jet ski, and I'm pretty sure this is not stainless, but the clip itself is. What is this? UPC clue. Yeah, they're both UPC. USA. All 300 stainless steel type F. I don't know what it means. But junk. Yes, sir. Let's do these valves. You adjust them just to where you barely can push down on it, or really none. And you just tighten up this nut right here. You hold the top of it while you tighten it. All right, let's put some oil in this thing and see if it fires. All right, it's good. All right, there we go. It went in neutral. I was wondering why it wouldn't do anything. All right, let's see. It wanted to. Alright, check this out. I just pulled this off. 
on these new four wheelers they don't want you messing with the adjustment screws so they drilled it out it's not adjustable anymore so what i am going to attempt to do is get it out stick a adjustable one in there and that should dial the light Yeah, that's a stupid screw right there. It's a D shape. That's so dumb. I have one of these older style adjustment needles instead of the D thing. And what this is, these two needles are the same, except this one is made to have a plug where the adjustment screw is. So it's for this is for the new EPA stuff. Every new bike, I'm pretty sure, is going to have this. But the old stuff has these. And probably the kits are going to have these as well. So. All right, so the little kit deal is telling me to turn the adjustment screw down here two and a half turns out. This one, it's two, it's a half, it's two and a half right there. It should have seemed like a lot out. So that is way out of order. boxes in all I need is a battery and that should be it then we got to move on to the seat cover front suspension and the rear brakes are completely shot I don't know what's going on with those so check this out got to any battery Oh, 
Got a little bitty battery. I think I'm gonna do anything. Perfect. Alright, let's see. It's been sitting for about a week and a half now. I've been gone. Let's get my seat back on it. All right, now that this thing's running, I'm gonna take a little bit of this and dump it in here. You don't need much, probably about that far from the bottom of the bottle. Then just crank it up and let it run for five minutes. Just let it idle. It's been about five minutes. Good original Honda would put in it now. Perfect. I got this thing attached to my helmet, so.
got to be idled up. So it runs pretty good now that it's idled up a hair that way it doesn't die whenever I go to give it throttle at a dead stop. Wasn't exactly planning to go through any kind of mud because I really didn't want to get it dirty that I'm working on it right now. So wait till it cools down and give it a bath. And then probably a seat cover is soon to come. I got to do check the rear diff and the front brakes. That clanking sound is these. They're not actually straight mounted they move it's an aftermarket kit I'm gonna take that lower part off and probably the upper part too I just don't like how that zigzags and it's too low I like the wide kit I just don't like the low new seat cover I think it's gonna look pretty good so I guess let's get to work on taking this old one off and as well as fixing this that I broke the other day. So to put a seat cover on what I always like to do now that it's a nice sunny day and let the sun warm it up to where it expands and becomes real nice and pliable. The next part to do when doing a seat cover is to take all your old off. Some people just stick it over this which I think is cheap and a half you know what way to do it but I like to pull all these staples out, even though they're a real pain 